Welcome back. Let's get started right away. On a 12 inch wooden dowel, attach all of our cords. And here's a quick tip for you. I use painter's tape at the end of my cords just so that it doesn't unravel while we work. All right, so we're gonna attach our cords by tying lark's head knots onto our wooden dowel. To do this, find the center of our rope by folding it in half. Take that loop and place it behind your wooden dowel and then take your long tail ends and thread it through that loop. Once you have your cords through the loop, then pull it taut and that is how you tie a lark's head knot. Now that you have all 22 cords onto your wooden dowel, we're going to start working with our vertical double half hitch knots. And as you can see, the first two rows are all blue. Now I'm going to be using a whole bunch of different types of yarn for our working cords. Now for the blue background, I'm going to be using t-shirt yarn. And I absolutely adore t-shirt yarn because it's less expensive and it comes in so many different colors. I'll leave a link in the description where I got mine. So let's work with a long strand. I use 120 inches at a time and place it behind your first set of lark's head cords. Make sure to have the short tail end on your left and the long end on your right. Form a loop on your right, wrap the tail end around and through the loop. The reason why I work with such long strands of cord at a time is because these vertical double half hitch knots eat up a ton of length. All right, so this is half of your vertical double half hitch. Now we need to do the other half. So repeat the same process, form a loop on your right, wrap your tail end around and through the loop. These macrame pixel patterns are perfect for the beginner. However, if you have a larger pattern that requires several different colors, it does tend to up the difficulty level. This pattern is a little bit more for the intermediate beginner, just because we use several different types of rope. All right, so our next knot looks a little bit different than our first. So what you have to do is make sure that your blue cord is right behind your next set of two cords. Form your loop on your right again, wrap your tail end around and through the loop. Bring the half of your knot all the way up to the very top and then repeat the same process one more time to complete our vertical double half hitch knot. Okay, so I'm gonna carry on and complete the rest of this row. I'll see you at the end. Alrighty, now that we made it to the very end of our first row, as you can see, our second row is also all solid blue. Now we're gonna have to go back in the opposite direction. So taking the same cord that you were working with, you want to place it behind your first set of cords. Make sure that your tail end is on your left. And then now we're going to make a loop on our left, wrap it around and through the loop. So essentially it's the same thing that we were doing before, only backwards. I find the easiest way to remember is that your cord and your loop will always be on the same side of the direction that you're going. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate one more time. You place your blue cord behind your next set of two cords, make a loop on your left, wrap your tail in around and through the loop, and then you repeat one more time. Okay, so I'm gonna jump ahead and show you what to do when you need to add a new color. As you can see on our third row, I have already done the first set of blue knots. Next, we need to switch to white. So for our white llama here, I'm using bulky blanket yarn. And I love the texture for this. It really um, adds a wooly tactile feeling to this wall hanging. So working with a very long strand, we're gonna attach just like we did at the very start of this project. So place your bulky blanket yarn behind your next set of cords with a short tail end on your left and the long on your right. Make a loop on your right, wrap it around and pull it through the loop. So again, this is the exact same way that we did right at the very start of this project. And if you ever run out of your color, this is the exact same way that we're going to attach a new strand of cord. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more knots in the same color. And then I'm going to show you what to do when you want to swap back to your previous color. Okay, so in my pattern, we're going right back to the blue. So to do this, pick up all your filler cords, 
take your blue strand and run it behind your filler cords and make sure it's placed on top of your previous white cord. Then carry on and tie your vertical double half hitch knot same as we did before. Okay, so I'm gonna work my way down the pattern and then I'll show you what to do next. gosh the texture on this guy is amazing all right so now what we're gonna do is clean up the mess on the back all right so what I find the easiest to clean up the mess is to find two strands that are close together just like these ones and tie just a regular double overhand knot this is the quickest easiest way to clean up the mess just snip off your excess ends and continue on until you're finished and now we're gonna move on to the flower portion. And I'm gonna show you the easiest way to add a flower. However, feel free to check out my flower series and you can add any flower you like. Alrighty, so let's add our flowers. I'm using six strands of t-shirt yarn cut at 60 inches. I find a safety pin really helps with this part. Or you can also use a crochet hook or a latch hook. Or if you got really strong fingers, you can just manage to get it through all on your own. What I'm doing is essentially using the safety pin as kind of a needle. Pick a spot where you want your flower to be and pull your safety pin all the way through your work. Once you have it all the way through, you're gonna repeat and bring it all the way up back through the other side. Once your t-shirt yarn is centered, we're going to be tying my easy rose knot. So to make sure our flower is super bulky, I'm going to grab two cords on each side and we're going to tie three square knots in a row. I am the original creator of the easy rose knot. I am super proud of it. I'll leave a link in the cards above to my original video just so that you can see a slower version of this knot. But for right now, I'm going to motor on ahead and complete our last two square knots. Next, grab your center cords and you want to fish it up through the very top where we left a gap. Once you have your tail ends through, you want to tug it tight so that your square knots roll up onto itself. Then secure with one more square knot right at the base. Now here's the fun part where you make a berry knot into my easy rose knot. Make a loop with the tail ends and then you just want to wrap it around your berry knot. This is by far the quickest, easiest way to do a rose knot. Next, all you have to do is cinch up your ends. I like to pull on each cord to make sure that it's just right. And then you want to cut off all your excess cord. I decided to add another smaller one right next to it as well, but this time I left the ends a little bit longer. Next, we're going to work on the necklace. So take a strand of yarn and fish it through just kind of like how we did with our rose knot. Tie the ends in the back together with a regular overhand knot. And then snip off the excess yarn. I repeated one more time so that our llama here has a layered necklace. And then to add some detail, I used some scrap pieces of yarn and I grabbed two at a time, folded it in half, and then tied on lark's head knots. If you're not a fan of the tassels, what you could do is instead hot glue some pom-poms onto your yarn. Or you could make a friendship bracelet and then use that as your necklace. You can really do a number of things. Let me know in the comments below what you think would look cool. But don't forget to trim up your ends so that they're even. If you would like to request a pattern, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Also, don't forget to like this video and I'll see you in the next one.